From spoiled kids who think that they rule the world, to spoiled kids who think that money grows on trees, these are the most spoiled kids you'll ever hear. And welcome to the Spoiled Kid Storytime Movie. Let's go. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have a story of a spoiled kid who gets so angry that he ends up burning down his entire summer camp. This may be the most insane story I have ever received, so sit back, relax, maybe grab something to eat, grab something to drink, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted the story Max. So this all happened one summer when Max was away at a day summer camp. So it wasn't a sleepaway camp, but it was a day camp that his mom would pick him up and drop him off every single day for a week. And this is a camp Max has been going to for a little while now. And so basically they would, you know, kids would be dropped off. They would do activities, kind of typical camp stuff. And anyways, on the first day, Max is dropped off and there's a bunch of kids over there and Max knows one guy and his name is Ben. Yes, Ben is not the bad guy in this situ in this story. Uh, but anyways, Ben and Max have been friends for a while. They actually met at this camp like two years ago. And while they don't really live super close to each other, or they just don't really hang out that much. They always make it a thing to try and always go back to this camp at the same time. Their parents stay in contact or whatever. So anyways, Max goes up to Ben and is like, hey man, it's been a while. And Ben's like, dude, it's been so long, so good to see you. And they're kind of just waiting while all the new campers come in and are starting to talk to each other. It's kind of like the introduction day where you're supposed to meet a bunch of people. And that's when they see this really fancy car pull up. It has, it's like one of those like black Mercedes with like the tinted windows and the door opens up and this kid walks out. And sometimes you just know like when someone walks with a certain energy, a certain strut, you already know that they're kind of like at least entitled a little bit. You can just kind of see it in the way that they walk. Well, Max and Ben right away Way could see that this kid who we're just going to call the spoiled kid you know just the way this kid was walking you could tell that he was up to no good and he kind of got everything he ever wanted so sure enough right you know the spoiled kid walks over and he's like kind of looking around and he's kind of just hanging out by himself and at first max and ben kind of just assumed that oh you know kid probably doesn't know anyone let's go over and try and to you know talk to him little did they know that the spoiled kid wasn't talking to anyone because he simply thought that he was better than everyone else. But anyways, Max and Ben walk over to Spoiled Kid. They're like, hey man, like, how's it going? And the Spoiled Kid looks at them and is like, good. And Max and Ben are kind of like, hey, you know, we've been to this camp for a while. You're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm assuming this is your first year here as we don't, you know, we haven't recognized you, but if you have any questions, let us know. And the Spoiled Kid's like, okay. And Max and Ben at this point still, while they have a bit of a vibe from this kid that he's like, I don't know, being he's kind of spoiled or whatever, but these kids in the beginning, or Max and Ben kind of just assume, well, well, that's fine. He's probably just shy. He's probably just nervous. He doesn't know us, right? He doesn't need to be maxing our energy to be a good guy. You know, we're going to break through to this kid, and he's probably going to be a great guy. Well, they were totally wrong with that sentiment, but it was a good sentiment. So anyways, right, the camp, after about like 10, 15 minutes, all the kids were dropped off. They were all checked in, and the main camp counselor kind of like blew their whistle and said all right guys we're heading into the barn so basically there was a real there was like a barn where it wasn't like a like a i don't know it wasn't like a uh, a farmer barn, like where they had horses or something, but it was kind of like a big open area. And then attached to it was uh, the rest of the building, which had like a little art studio, had a, it was like kind of like a, uh, it was a kind of a big building. It wasn't like a massive like university building, but it was a big enough building that you could have multiple. You had like an art studio, you had a big open area. And there was also a pool that they would walk up to every day, at least when the weather was good, but we'll get to that later. So they all walk into the barn area and the main camp counselor is like, hey, Hey guys, like, welcome to camp whatever, week two, and everyone's like, ah, whatever, you know, you know how that goes, and, and the camp counselor's like, okay, so we're just gonna play a really quick game of, like, get to know you, so walk around, and whoever you see, go up to them, and ask them what their favorite thing to do is. So Max and Ben, you know, they split up and they start walking around talking to a bunch of people. And that's when Max, you know, he sees someone, goes up to them, asks them, oh, what's your favorite thing to do? And they say, oh, I love to fish or whatever. And that's when Max sees the spoiled kid. And he sees the spoiled kid who at this point he doesn't know is a spoiled kid. He still thinks that this might be a good kid and that, you know, he's just struggling. Max goes up to him 
and sees that he isn't really talking to other people or he's kind of like avoiding other people. And, you know, other people are like, well, if he's avoiding me, I'm not going to like go out of my way. But Max really does go out of his way to be like, hey, spoil kid, like spin a second. And the spoil kid's like, hi. And Max is like, so what do you do in your free time? And the spoil kid is like, well, I polish my watch collection. And Max is like, oh, that's sick, man. Like, do you have any like, I don't know, <laughs> what kind of like uh what kind of cartoon watches do you have because like literally in max's mind because this was a little while ago he was thinking of like you know those novelty watches of like spongebob funny watches or whatever and he's like oh wait do you have like a fitbit or something and spoiled kid is like no i don't have a fitbit i don't have a funny spongebob watch i have a rolex aqua racer or submariner you, you don't even understand what that is. And at the time, Max had no idea. He's like, no, I don't. And the spoiled kid's like, well, it's a very expensive watch, and I spend my time shining it. And Max is like, okay. Max keeps walking around, talking to other people. At this point, you might be thinking, dude, Max, obviously this kid is spoiled. He's not a good kid. But Max is kind of was like, well, that was a weird interaction, but... I don't know. He's probably just nervous. At a certain point, you can't say that every interaction of someone being a jerk is them being nervous. But anyways, right, you know, Max is a good kid giving him the benefit of the doubt. So anyways, you know, they have lunch and Max and Ben are sitting around. They're excited for the week to happen. And they're talking a little bit about the spoiled kid. And they're like, I feel bad for that kid. Like he's not, he seems really nervous. He seems like he's not like trying to make friends. And they're like, no, what? While we shouldn't spend our entire time trying to, like, break through to him because we only got a week and we want to have fun here, let's still continue to try, at least today. So anyways, right after lunch, they go up to the pool, and, you know, at this point, this is where they start to realize how evil or how truly spoiled the spoiled kid is. So sure enough, they go up to the pool, and the way that the pool works is there's, like, one really big pool, and they go in shifts of, like, 15 kids or whatever, because while it's a big pool, there's, like, 50 kids at the camp, or maybe they go in shifts of, like, I don't know, 20 or something. I, I don't know. It, it breaks up into about four groups or so, and there's about 60, 50 or so kids there. And so the spoiled kid, Max, and Ben were all all happened to be randomly in the same group, and they were in group two. So Max and Ben were talking, and they were watching as the spoiled kid, like, because there were bars around the pool. It was an outdoor pool. So they're not bars, but there was, like, a fence, and you could see through the fence. And, the, and Max and Ben looked over, and they saw the spoiled kid with, like, both of his arms on, like, both of his hands on, like, the fence, kind of rattling it, almost like, you know, in the movies when someone's in prison and they rattle the prison bars or whatever. And Max and Ben go up to him. They were like, dude, what's going on? And the spoiled kid's like, I want to go in the pool. And Max and Ben are like, yeah, dude, well, we're about to go in in, like, five minutes or so. We're in group two. And the spoiled kid rattles the, like, starts rattling the fence again. He's like, boom, 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 boom. He's like, I want to go in now. And Max and Ben kind of look at each other like, uh, that's not a normal response, right? Like, like that's not how people normally respond to things, correct? Like, I'm not just going crazy. That isn't a normal person response, Right? And they kind of just look at each other like, uh, what's, what's going on here? And this, and they're like, you know what? Uh, well, we're gonna, we're all going in pretty soon. Like, there's no need to, like, overreact or anything. And the spoiled kid just gives them, like, a dirty look. And then goes back to, like, rattling on the, on the gate bars or whatever. And when Max and Ben, like, walk away, a camp counselor actually walks over, goes up to the spoiled kid. And while Max can't hear exactly what the camp counselor says, it's pretty clear that the camp counselor was like, like, bro, you can't be doing this. You're going to be on in like five minutes. Just wait over there. So the spoiled kid walks over, stands in a corner, crosses his arms, and is all angry. And Max and Ben retreat. Oh, they don't retreat, but they go back to where they were standing before. And they, you know, Ben's like, dude, that kid's kind of weird. And Max is like, well, yeah, he's not as cool as I thought he would be. And Ben's like, dude, what? Like, why was he being so weird about not being able to swim? And Max is like, well, maybe he really likes to swim. And Ben's like, dude, you really think that? And, and Max is like, I don't know, man. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe the kid's having a tough first day. And sure enough, group two is called in. So Max, Ben, and all those kids, you know, they're in their bathing suits. They run over and they all kind of like put their towels down and they start to slide into the pool. And the spoiled kid in his mind is probably like, it's pool time and I don't get the pool to myself. This will not do. So anyways, the spoiled kid jumps into the pool 
And then this is kind of crazy. He immediately starts peeing in the pool. So you just see this big yellow cloud start to like form around the kid. And all the other kids are like, ew, oh my God. Bleh. And they all start to run out of it. And some of the counselors are like, what? So they start to run over. And the spoiled kid is literally just sitting in a big pee puddle in the pool. And he starts swimming around in it. And Max and Ben are like, oh because Max and Ben have not even jumped in the pool yet. They're literally just, like, waiting to jump in. And then Max and Ben look at each other and are like, Huh? What? <laughs> what? 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 And, and at this point, right, you know, the camp counselor walks up and is like, Oh, buddy, did you have an accident? And, you know, the spoiled kid's like, What? Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Or whatever. And, you know, they're like, Well, buddy, you should probably get out of there. And the spoiled kid's like, no, I like it in here. And that's when Ben turns to Max and is like, wait a minute, do you think that that was on purpose? And Max is like, bro, what do you mean? He's like, well, he was complaining about not being in the pool and he didn't like the look of it when everyone else jumped in and then he peed everywhere and he's staying in the pool. He's doing laps right now. And so sure enough, right, you know, camp counselors are like, buddy, you should really get out of the pool. And there's like 10 minutes left and like there's like they're bringing over the decontamination kits or whatever. And he's like, no, I like the pool all to myself. And at this point, Max is like, wait, this kid did pee in the pool to get it all to himself. So basically what happened was the spoiled kid saw all these other kids getting into the pool, was like, I want this pool to myself because whenever I want something, I get it. And decided to literally urinate in the pool to get what he wanted, which is ridiculous, but he did it. So sure enough, and I mean, this is like the least, this is not the most ridiculous thing. As you can tell by the title of the video, it gets much crazier. But this is the beginning of when Ben and Max started to realize that this kid is just not a good kid and that he's basically just bad news. So sure enough, right, uh, the rest of the kids can't go into the pool. So basically group three, four, and I think there's a group five. They just all were told, sorry, guys, you're going to have to do field games. And they're like, what? And most of them didn't realize that the reason was was because uh, you know, the spoiled kid literally just peed up the entire pool. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing ever. He peed up the entire pool, man, and he was just swimming around in it. And Max and Ben were like, all right, so we're not going to go out of our way to hang out with this kid. So anyways, the first day ended, and, you know, Max's mom picked him up and said, hey, like, how was your first day? I know how much you love this camp. And Max tells her the story of this kid. She's like, wow, this is a very strange kid. And Max is like, yeah, well, I think this is probably it for him. And let me just say... That was not it for him. So the next day comes around, and when Max wakes up, it is pouring rain. His mom says, hey, honey, like, I just want to let you know it is pouring rain, so you will probably not be doing any outdoor activities or going in the pool today. So Max is dropped off at camp, and sure enough, they're having all their activities inside. And the first, like, activity, whatever, was some kind of, like, arts and craft thing. It was just Max and Ben chilling, hanging out, having a good time. But after that, you know, it was lunch. And normally, like, lunch isn't, you know, it, it's pretty standard. Normally, we'd think, oh, what happens at lunch? But basically, right, you know, there's kind of like a f five minutes before lunch started, you know, everyone has their lunch boxes. Basically, you bring a little container with all your lunch in, and you put your lunch box on, like, a bench or something. So there's, like, 50 lunch boxes, and, you know, Max and Ben, they walk out of their arts and craft class, and they go to their, uh, their lunch boxes, and they open it up and, you know, they go to it and they say, wait a minute, this has already been opened up. And Max turns to Ben and is like, bro, did, is yours opened up? And Ben's like, dude, mine's opened up too. And that's when they see that everybody's lunchbox has already been opened up. So like everyone's lunchbox has been unzipped. And, you know, Max is like, bro, where did my cookie go? And Ben's like, dude, where did my pudding cup go? And you start hearing murmurs from everyone else. Basically, they're missing one or two things, but they're normally missing the best part of their lunch. And that's when they hear this kind of crunching and munching noise, right? And they, and you know, so someone like walks to like the corner and they see that because there's like a curtain, because there's like a stage in the barn and they like hear noise behind the curtain and they draw the curtain and they see the spoiled kid sitting there with basically, basically a mountain of like dessert items from everyone's lunch. And at this point, right, the camp counselors are getting so many, like, complaints about someone opened up my lunchbox and took something. And that's when they noticed uh, basically the spoiled kid with a massive pile of all the, uh, basically all the, um, all the complaint, uh, complaints of all the food that was missing. So, you know, the, immediately Max and Ben are like, oh, my God, 
The spoiled kid must have, like, left arts and crafts early, went through everyone's lunchboxes, and just took all the good stuff and started eating it. So sure enough, right, you know, the camp counselors are like, you're coming with us. They take the spoiled kid out of there, and they kind of reprimand him in the hall, and everyone else runs over to the big pile, and they're kind of, like, going through their stuff. And about half the stuff has already been eaten, so half the kids are able to retrieve their, you know, their missing, uh, their missing dessert items, while the other half are just left with wrappers and, you know, spoons and used pudding cups. Yep, Rip Ben, his pudding cup is gone. R.I.P. pudding cup, you know, you'll live another day or something like that. And so sure enough, Ben and Max are sitting down eating their lunch, and ben Max also lost his, like, cookie thing or whatever dessert thing he had. So he's pretty upset as well. He's like, dude, this Ben kid sucks. They're like, yeah, you know, I, and Ben was, or not Ben kid, this spoiled kid sucks. Ben's like, yeah, I kind of got a feeling that he was a little weird when he decided to pee in the pool to have it all to himself. But this is like, this is overkill. And this is the least of what he does. As you guys know by the title, this only gets more and more insane. Real quick, comment spoiled if you made it this far into the video. I just want to see how many people made it this far. And then also, if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is, Maybe after this video, or maybe later in the day when you're playing a video game, cleaning your room, drawing an art project, animating, trying to go to sleep, just literally binge watch a bunch of these videos. Watch like two, three, four, five of these videos in a row, and let me know in the comment section, you know, how many of these videos you're watching, what you're doing while you're watching them. I'll try and heart the comments and reply to say thank you because it really does help support the channel. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone watching right now. Even if you this is your first video or if you've watched like 30 of my videos in the last 24 hours, every bit of like every minute watched helps me out so much. Anyways, let's get back to the story because it only gets crazier from this point on. You might be thinking, wow, this kid's spoiled. This kid is not just spoiled. He is insane from this point on. Also, you might be noticing that the gameplay is no longer looped on the really long videos like these, and it's because I just upgraded my setup. I got a, like, I do my videos on my phone, so I got a better phone with more storage. So no longer will you have to watch the same gameplay three times. I'm sorry, I literally had no space on my phone. I had a very budget setup, but now you get new gameplay for every minute you watch. Anyways, so Max and Ben were sitting there and they're like, oh my God, this kid's actually the worst, right? So later, you know, so later that day, you know, uh, they, they see the spoiled kid is back and there's a three strike system at this camp. The very first day, I didn't go over this, but basically they said, welcome everyone to camp, whatever. They went over the rules and then they also explained their three strike system. Basically, if there's kind of a major violation or you basically, you just break one of their rules, you get two strikes and then on your third strike, you're sent home you're not allowed to come back. There's no like tuition refund or anything like that. You're just you're just done, right? So basically, Max and Ben are pretty sure that the kid just got a strike. In fact, you know, the spoiled kid probably should have got a strike for like peeing in the pool, but like they didn't know that he did it on purpose, even though the spoiled kid very clearly did it on purpose just to get, you know, the pool all to himself. But right now, the spoiled kid was sitting with one strike, and he was not happy about it. The next day rolls around, and, you know, sure enough, uh, it is, it's a nice day. They're able to go outside. They're able to go to the pool. And in the morning activity, they actually have a big kind of, like, tag game. So it's a massive game of tag, and uh, Ben is actually it, and Max is not it. So Ben and a few other kids are designated as it, and basically you run around, and when you tag someone in this game, they also become it as well, so they can tag people too. It's like the zombie variation of tag, so like there's this, it basically gets to a point where like the, the numbers start growing exponentially, and then boom, everyone's done. So it's a pretty fun game, and the rounds are also fairly quick, and they did it so that more people could start as being it, more people could, you know, or and the other people that were it before could, like, be normal runners in the game as well. So sure enough, you know, Matt or Ben is kind of running around. He's getting people. And Ben eventually finds Max and kind of runs him down and gets him. So Max and Ben are kind of in a team right now trying to find people hiding because you can hide in this game too. And, you know, trying to find them, tag them down, get more people to the tag side. And that's when they see the spoiled kid. And Ben's like, you know what? For taking my pudding cup yesterday, this is going to be revenge. And Ben was a very fast kid. And the spoiled kid, uh, I'm not going to make any comments about his appearance, but let me just say that he was not very athletic at all. And it definitely, uh, it definitely was conveyed through the way that he wasn't able to run, basically, at all. So, yeah, Ben was easily, easily caught up with him. Ben easily caught up with him, got to him, 
tagged him, and not just Ben, Max, and a few other kids saw him be tagged, right? A lot of kids saw him get tagged, and the spoiled kid's like, you didn't get me, I dodged it. And, and Ben was like, dude, I, I clearly got you. And then Ben tagged him again. He's like, oh, I dodged that too. He did not dodge it, by the way. He was like, very clearly made contact. So that's when Ben like put two hands on this kid's shoulder and was like, tell me you're dodging this. And the kid like brushed him off and was like, I dodged. And then the kid starts to like waddle away. And you know, Ben turns to Max and is like, oh my God. So at this point, Max and Ben both tag him. And he's like, I dodged both of your tags. You can't get me, guys. And that's when one of the camp counselors sees what's going on. And he's like, hey, you know, why are you still running, kid? And the spoiled kid's like, uh, Mr. Counselor, I dodged all of their tags. And the counselor's like, that's not what I saw. And then Ben tagged him again. He's like, I got you. And the spoiled kid's like, Counselor, Counselor, didn't you see? I dodged that too. And the camp counselor's like, no, no, you, you got tagged, man. Like, it's fun. It's fun being it. Trust me. It's fun being it. You don't have to keep running. And the spoiled kid turns to all of them, all of them and said, you will regret cheating. You will regret cheating. And he starts, like, running away. And Ben and Max look at each other like, bro, what? And so sure enough, right, you know, there's another kid, you know, that was running with them. And so it's Ben, Max, and a third kid that are running. And so, yeah, so the three of them are running around. And that's when the spoiled kid comes up behind them. And he pushes Max and Ben over. He goes up behind them and does a massive push. They both fall over. And they watch as a spoiled kid turns around and kicks the third kid in the shin. And the kid's like, ah! He falls down. The kid starts crying or whatever. And one of the camp counselors saw the entire thing go down. He's like, hey, you, what did you just do? The spoiled kid says, they just all tripped. And, you know, the counselor's like, hey, I know you. You're the kid who, like, ate all the food yesterday. And, like, no, they did not trip. They're, like... I saw the whole thing go down. You push those two kids, and then you kick that kid, and he's hurt. In fact, I think they're all hurt. You're coming with me. And he, like, takes out his phone. And he calls another counselor. He's like, hey, I need backup or something like that. And so another counselor comes over, assists, like, medically with, like, Ben, Max, and the third kid. Ben and Max were fine. They had some scrapes. But the third kid got some damage. Like, he didn't break anything, but he was in a lot of pain or whatever. And so the spoiled kid, once again, was taken away. And that means that he was now on two strikes. And he was very angry that he was on two strikes. Because two strikes means you're one strike away from being kicked out of the camp. But also, when you're on two strikes, you're, you have a lot of your privileges kind of revoked. For example, the spoiled kid was no longer allowed to go swimming. However, he had to go up to the swimming place. He just had to sit there and watch the other, other kids swim. Because they weren't going to have a counselor stay just to guard, like, the one kid. But they also didn't want to reward him with swimming if he's been terrible for, like... If he has two strikes, you have to be pretty bad to have two strikes. So anyways, that day, up at swimming, uh, Ben and Max are waiting around for, you know, their group to be called. And the spoiled kid, he's just standing there, and he is very angry. And, he, and you know, he goes up to Ben and Max. He's like, you two are cheating today. You two were cheating today, and all I did was I got revenge for your cheating. And because of that, I'm being blamed. And Ben and Max were like, yeah, you're blamed for, first of all, first of all, Ben's like, we were not cheating. We touched you a billion times, and you said that you dodged it. Explain how you dodged that, because you did not. One of the camp counselors saw the whole thing and even proved that you, in fact, were cheating. And then you decided, after running off and crying, because you're a little baby boy, and at this point, like, ben, Max is like, bro, Ben's going off, because you're a little baby boy, right? And you decided to come around and, and push us and then kick that guy in the shin because you can't handle losing because you're a loser? At this point, Max is like, I, or not Max, the spoiled kid was like, I was already upset because of my two strikes, but now you've pushed me over the edge. This can't mean something to you? Well, it means nothing to me, and I will take it down single-handedly. And, you know, Ben and Max are like, okay, dude, like, whatever. Like, what? What, 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 what are you saying, bro? Little did Max and Ben know that the spoiled kid was not just saying, I'm going to take down this whole summer camp. He's not, he wasn't just saying that for saying that. He wasn't just saying that to try and scare them. These weren't random comments. 
These were, <laughs> as the people who read the title of this video already know. By the way, drop a like in the video if you haven't already. I don't normally ask, but just check to see if you have. Basically, right, Max and Ben didn't think anything of it. So the next day comes around, and this time, like, the spoiled kid brought something from home. A little something that you use if, you know, if, if you smoke, which you shouldn't, you might need something to light your cigarette, right? You might need something like that. But there are multiple use, uses for a lighter, as you shall see. So anyways, on this now infamous day in, like, Max's life, because it's a crazy day, he goes in, and it's, a, it's pretty normal. And so for the first half, before they go swimming in the afternoon, they're just doing some simple crafts again. So remember, this building has, like, a barn, which is, like, a big open area, and the big open area is attached to kind of a wing, in a sense, like a hall, which attaches to, like, several rooms where kids are able to do, like, crafts or whatever, as well as there's one kind of, like, camp counselor's room with, like, the all the office paper and all that kind of stuff. And remember, in the barn, there's a stage which has curtains. So, right, Max and Ben are just, you know, they're sitting around, and they're doing their crafts, and they're like... Dude, like, the spoiled kid was here earlier. He has to go to the bathroom, and he's been gone for, like, 20 minutes. So Max and Ben are like, dude, that's really weird. And, you know, Ben's like, well, I mean, I kind of have to go to the bathroom. Do you want to come with me? That's not a weird request. They just wanted to, like, mess around in the bathroom. Not like that. Stop being weird. You know what I mean. And so Max and Ben, you know, they both ask to go to the bathroom. The camp counselor is like, okay, like, don't, don't mess around. Don't just play games in there the entire time. So they, they walk out, right, and they're walking down. And so the bathroom is right by the barn. But that's when they see that the barn door is open. And they're like, why is the barn door open? And they look in there, right? And they start to, like, smell a really weird smell. It is the smell of smoke. So they look in there, and they see the curtain, right? And they see the curtain is catching flame. And what they also see is the spoiled kid standing, sitting, or kind of cr like kneeling or crouching or whatever on the other side of the curtain with the lighter trying to catch that side on fire too. So at this point, Ben and Max are speechless. They are stunned. They turn to each other and they sprint back and they go, they start slamming their fists on the camp counselor's door, like the door for like where they all sit. Bum, 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 right? And so they open it up, and, like, some camp counselor was like, what's up, dudes? Like, you guys get in trouble or something? They're like, no, 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 come with us. So Ben and Max are, like, running down. The dude's like, guys, calm down. And that's when Ben and Max get to the barn. They open the door, and they point. And they point to the, the, the curtain now catching complete flame and also the spoiled kid lighting, trying to, like, light the other side on fire. And the camp counselor's like, holy... And, you know, and then, you know, he's like, he gets on his phone and he's like, emergency, emergency. And he goes to the fire alarm, pulls that sprinkler system start to go right. But the thing is, the fire is now spreading. This is like a wooden, it's like wooden carpet, everything. This is not this, this like barn, this whole like facility was made a while ago, bro. This thing was made like when the fire safety rules were not as good. So the sprinkler systems were okay, but the fire was just starting to spread really rapidly. And the camp counselor grabs the spoiled kid and says, you're coming with me. And all the kids are walking out in a single file line and they all stand out in the field. And most of them think, oh, it's our mandatory fire drill or something, whatever. But that's when one of the kids is like, well, I smelled smoke. And so Ben and Max turn around and they start telling every kid what they saw. And the rumors and the truth start to spread insanely fast. All the kids are now telling everyone that the spoiled kid, the pee pee boy, the one who ate all their food and kicked a bunch of people because he'd lost in the game, decided to burn down the camp out of revenge. So rumors are starting to spread. All of a sudden, they start to smell smoke. And that's when they see, you know, smoke start to pour out of the rooms, out of the windows. And that's when they start to see a flame catch. It is the craziest thing because for the next 20 minutes, you know, they hear like a fire department coming, but they see the place starting to just completely burn down. Like for some reason, whatever, some maybe like the electrical system caught and then boom, something exploded or all the insulation caught. I don't know what happened, but it just, the entire place basically went up in flames. And the entire time, like three camp counselors basically had like the spoiled kid, like, and not in handcuffs, but they had him like, you know, they surrounded him, were interrogating him, were like shouting at him. 
and you know the spoiled kid's mom appeared and she runs over and the camp counselors start like shouting and pointing and pointing at the building pointing at the spoiled kid and max and ben are just like oh my god oh my god like this is insane and max is like all right well i knew this kid was weird but like bro what and sure enough, the fire department comes and, you know, they start, they put out the fire. But at this point, the entire, like, building is charred. It is gone. It's not burnt down to, like, the floor. But all they have left is, like, the outlines of the structure of the building. It is intense. So at this point, right, the kid got his third strike. Okay, it's a little bit more, <laughs> it's a little bit more worse than the third strike, right? So at this point, there were still two days left of camp. And the, uh, the camp basically sent out a parent saying that, like, there was a, there was a rogue, ca- like, kid that went and, like, tried to, like, burn down this, the camp, basically, and that, you know, they could either have a, you know, a 30%, like, a, or a, like, 10%, redu- like, a, t- a, fee- a tuition, I guess, um, uh, refund. Because, like, a lot of it was already spent on, like, paying the counselors and the equipment. They said, we can give you, like, a 10% refund or, you know, the kids can come with us for the next two days and we'll just be at the pool because that obviously wasn't affected and do field games at the pool. Like, it's a terrible circumstance what happened, but we understand if you don't want your kid here anymore. So sure enough, right, Max and Ben, they came for the next two days and it just wasn't the same because of what just happened. And anyways, right, they have no idea what happened to the spoiled kid. Because police obviously got involved, but he's also a a kid, right? So I don't really know how that all works out. And, you know, Ben and, you know, Max, they never saw him again, obviously, because he did not return to the camp. Probably because he was banned for life and probably wasn't allowed at any other camps as well because, like, word got out, you know? And so Max and Ben actually did return to the camp the next year. However, it took place at a totally different location. Like, for the remainder of that camp's existence, they were never back at that location because they never rebuilt it. I think something else eventually got built there later. But Max and Ben, still to this day, whenever they go to the camp and they meet a bunch of new campers, Max and Ben, eventually, when they were older, they became, like, uh, counselors in training. And then when they decided to become actually counselors, they would always tell the story of the spoiled kid every single year. And it kind of became an underground camp legend. We're calling the subscriber in today's story, John. So this all happened one day when John was in seventh grade. And John had a regular teacher in his history class. However, the teacher was sick and was pretty sick, had a pretty bad case of the cold, but happened to be out for an entire week. John didn't know this at the time, but you know, the substitute teacher just came in every single day that week. So his teacher happened to be out for the week. And this substitute teacher was pretty epic, was was a pretty cool guy, as you will see. It's not apparent at first, but trust me, the payoff is totally worth it. There's also a bully in John's school, unfortunately, and the bully is in John's history class. History, yeah, okay. In, in John's history class, right? And this bully has been kind of known as, like, the bully for the longest time. John is in seventh grade, and he's been going to the same school since he was in first grade. And this kid has always been known as a school bully since first grade, since the first year John has been there. And obviously, as the kid has gotten older, he's gotten more, you know, crueler and more sophisticated with his bullying. But... He just never stopped. And John would always tell his parents, and his parents were like, oh, well, he's going to grow up someday. And let me just say, it has been been seven years. It has been seven years of long, long bullying. And John's been waiting for long enough. So this all happened. Let's go to day one. So day one, John comes into class, and he's waiting for his regular teacher, and the substitute teacher walks in instead. And John's like, oh, okay, I guess we have a substitute today. And the substitute is like, hey, class, like, my name is Mr. Davenport. I will be substituting for Mr., uh, I don't know, Mr. Kavanaugh because, you know, he, you know, he's sick today. And if he's sick for any other days this week, I'll be substituting as well. Like, we'll be doing normal activities. Class will be continuing as usual. I, you know, I've studied the lesson plan and things will be, like, normal. So anyways, on the first day, class was fairly normal. And, you know, John was sitting with his friend, Ben. Ben is not the bully this time. Uh, he normally is. Whenever I have a bad character, I always name him Ben because we're just calling the bully the bully. So John and Ben were sitting together and they were doing some kind of like, you know, some reading activity in the class or something. And that's when they look over and they see the bully. 
And the bully is with his other minions, you know? So a lot of times in school, like, the bully will have, like, his minions that do whatever he says. And the bully had his minions in this class. And they were sitting there, and they were snickering because they were, like, throwing... Like, they were, like, chewing, like, crunching up and chewing up wads of paper and then spitting them through tubes. So kind of, like, spitballing people in class. And people would turn around and be like, hey, who did that? And they'd, like, look away and snicker. Everyone knew it was the bully, but they also didn't want to mess with the bully because the bully was known for, like upping his bullying against anyone who kind of like fought back. So it was kind of just known that, that the best thing you could have done in that situation was kind of just ignore it because the, the more or, or the less you ignore it, the worse it gets and the harder it is to actually ignore. And, you know, John turned to Ben. He's like, you know what, this kid, this kid's been the worst for the longest time. Like, is anyone ever going to put a stop to this kid or is this kid ever going to grow up? And, you know, Ben is like, dude, I totally see this guy becoming some executive of a company and doing this exact same thing to his subordinates. Like, I see that happening. And John's just like, dude, I know. that I told my mom this years ago that he was a bully. My mom's like, oh, he's going to grow up, John. He's going to grow up. Well, he's growing up to be a bigger butt than he was before. And the thing is, right, the bully overhears this. And the bully turns around and is like, hello, John. And John's like, oh, uh, hello there. And the bully's like, well, did I hear you guys talking about me? And Ben is like, no. The bully's like, I, well, I don't know. Last time I went to the doctor, last time I got my ears checked, the doctor said that they were pretty good, that I could hear quite well. So I really don't know what's going on. I really don't know what's going on because I thought I heard my name. And John's like, uh, nope, you must have heard it wrong. The bully's like, well, I guess that's the case. And... That better have been the case. Have a good day, fellas. Bully turns around, goes back to making spitballs. So John and Ben are kind of like talking with each other. And that's when John feels a wad of like wetness like appear on his neck. And he looks at it, and sure enough, it's one of the bully's spitballs. And the bully and his little minions are laughing or whatever. And Ben's like, uh, like you shouldn't. Don't react. Don't react, John. And John, he, he, does, he does kind of like the he, – he does the cool thing but also probably not the greatest idea. He takes a spitball, and he throws it right back at the bully. And the bully, like, it catches him, like, on the eyebrow. And the bully peels the spitball off of his eyebrow and looks directly at John and legitimately just says, you're going to regret that. And Ben whispers, like, dude, why did you do that? Everyone knows if you just ignore him, he'll go away. And John turns to his friend Ben and says, bro, I've been ignoring him for the longest time. Everyone ignores him, and he just gets away with this all the time. And Ben's like, was that worth it, throwing that spitball back at him? Was that really worth it? And John's like, you know what? Yes, it was. So the bell rings, and everyone's leaving class. And John is, like, quickly leaving the class to go to his next class when he immediately finds himself on the floor because the bully stood in front of him, stuck out his leg very stiffly, John tripped on it, and fell right over. And John's backpack, like, wasn't zipped up all the way, and it kind of, like, flung over his head, and everything spilled out in front of it. And the bully says, nice trip, John. Hopefully I'll see you next fall. <laughs> and John's like, you didn't even say the joke right. So Ben comes over, helps John get his stuff back up. And Ben's like, man, what did I tell you? You don't want to be messing with that bully, man. And John's like, you know what? I've had enough of not messing with them. You know what? Th this is war, man. This is war. And I'm going to be, maybe I'm going to be the first one. And maybe I'll be the only one to stand up to this kid. But you know what? I'll be damned if no one else stands up to this kid. I'll be damned if I let this kid, like, bully me again. And John and Ben's like, okay, we'll have fun being tripped. And John's like, well, that's not very funny, Ben. And Ben's like, I'm serious. Like, this kid's going to go hard until you stop. And then John's like, well, I'm not going to stop. So the next day rolls around, right? And, you know, John goes into school and he doesn't really think anything of it. And he goes in the class and this kid is just staring him down the entire class. And John and Ben are sitting together. And this isn't like an activity class. This is kind of a sit there and listen to the lecture class. And Ben kind of leans over and whispers, John. John's like, yeah, what's up, Ben? And Ben's like, dude, the bully's staring at you. And John's like, dude, I know his eyes are piercing the back of my skull. Sure enough, right, the bully has just been like staring at John, kind of smiling. And his two little minions are like staring as well. And the substitute teacher at the front of the class doesn't seem to be paying any attention to this. Little did you guys know he actually is, but that's for later in the story. He comes in to be pretty epic later on. But anyways, John's like, you know what? 
I don't care, Ben. He can stare at me all he wants. If he really wants me like that, I'm going to have to let him down softly because I don't want to hurt his feelings. And Ben's like, dude, you're getting yourself in really deep. I don't know if this is a good idea. And Ben's like, this is a great idea. This is probably my best idea yet. Uh, it was maybe not John's best idea, idea yet because John gets up to leave and he's very careful not to have not to trip over anything. And that's when he's met at the end. Like as soon as he leaves the classroom, he bumps right into the bully who's standing there. He's like, "Oh, hello there, John." The bull and John's like, "Hi." The bully's like, "Well, you know, I, I don't know if you're available this afternoon, but uh, I just gotta have a word with you this afternoon." John's like, I'm actually busy. I got to go home. And the bully's like, ah, I think you'll find time. I think you'll find time. And then the bully and his minions walk away. And Ben walks up to him. He's like, John, John, what just happened? And, and John's like, dude, what? He just came up to me and said, uh, am I free this afternoon? And Ben's like, oh, my God. And John's like, dude, what? He just said, if I'm free this afternoon. And Ben's like, dude, dude, no. And John's like, dude, what? what is going on? And Ben's like, bro, that's what he tells people before he beats them up, bro. And Ben's like, dude, what? And John's like, yeah. Or uh, Ben's like, John's like, what? And Ben's like, dude, you got to hide. And uh, sure enough, John is starting to take this a little bit more seriously because... While the bully is not that harmful, like physically, when you don't push back, in the rare cases people have pushed back, he is trying to continuously, like, show his authority, basically, show his dominance, um, or however he chooses to do that. So Ben and John are like, John's like, all right, well, you know, this probably isn't a good idea. We got to find a way to sneak out of school because there's like one main exit and kind of like the place where people get picked up because uh, John rides the bus, right? There's like a place where the bus always arrives, but to get there, you have to go through this main hall and Ben and John sit down and realize that the bully is most likely going to try and intercept them in the main hall and like pull John aside and, you know, give him a few, a uh, few one twos, you know what I mean? And so John is like, all right, Ben, well, we got to, we got to figure this out. So they look around, they find another exit. And so they basically decide to skip their next class. Normally a bad idea, but you know, this is quite the circumstances. So they're looking around and you know, they, they look and they're like, oh my God, here's another exit. And then it's, they see it's a fire exit. So if they push this, they'll push the fire alarm. They'll get in a ton of trouble. It'll just be a bad, it, it'll be a bad situation, right? It'll be a bad deal. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment bully down below, and I'll try and hard as many comments to say that. I just want to see how many people, and I also want to see the names and the faces of the people supporting this channel by watching this far. If you don't know, the best way to support this channel is just by watching the videos. It's called Watch Time. YouTube really appreciates that. So if you want to really support the channel, maybe now or later, sit down and watch two, three, four. Watch as many videos as you possibly can. Uh, and also, you can do this while gaming, uh, drawing, trying to go to sleep, cleaning your room, literally whatever. And please go in the comment section down below and tell me what are you, you are doing while binge watching the videos and supporting the channel. And I'll shout some people out like the person on screen right now who is doing this. So thank you to this person on screen as well as thank you to all of you guys for supporting the channel by binge watching the videos. With that being said, let's get back to the story. So this point, right, John and Ben are looking around frantically, skipping a, skipping a class, right? So they're taking it pretty seriously, trying to find an exit, which is not going to be the exit that the bully expects, because there's normally one main way that everyone leaves the building and then goes to the bus or goes to get picked up. And they're assuming that the bully is going to know this, which, I mean, he is going to know this, and he's going to be waiting there, and he's going to pick John up and give him the whole one-two, right? So John and Ben are looking around, and they they do find an exit. However, unfortunately, it is a fire escape. And Ben is looking at his watch. He's like, dude, we got 10 minutes till the bell rings. And John's like, well, can't we just wait it out? And he's like, dude, like you're going to miss the bus and then you're going to be stranded here. And John's like, I could always call my mom and say I missed the bus. And Ben's like, bro, they're going to know that you didn't leave and they're going to come find you in this building, one of his minions at least, right? And then you're going to be stuck here probably for an hour without your mom coming to pick you up. You don't want to do this. And John's like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to walk there and just like let it happen? And Ben's like, we still got 10 minutes. We can figure this out. So John and Ben are frantically like going around the school trying to figure it out. And that's when John or Ben actually has the brilliant idea of John, John, John. And Ben's like, what? And, or John or, and John's like, what? And Ben's like, dude, I figured it out. We're not supposed to be looking for doors. And John's like, dude, what do you mean we're not supposed to be looking for doors? And Ben's like, 
windows, John. There are no fire exit windows. And John's like, oh. So then now they start looking around, and a lot of the windows are like, glued shut or way too high or have like some screen in them but that's when they go into the bathroom and they find glass windows that when you like crank them they go up and when you crank them they go down there's no there's no massive drop it's like a three foot drop or something they're not super big but you you can put your backpack through them and then you can crawl through them as well and it's the perfect escape and that's when the bell rings and John and Ben are like, all right, or Ben's like, all right, John, let's go. So sure enough, John pushes his backpack through. Ben pushes his backpack through. John gets up there, goes through the window, drops down, says it's all good, not a big drop or anything. Ben goes through, does the same thing. They get their backpacks on and they sneak around the school and they see the bus and they sprint towards the bus. And they're sprinting towards the bus. They get on it and they both sit in the back. And when they both sit in the back, they're looking out and they see one of the, the, the bully's minions walk out to the bus and look around, right? And that's when the bully makes eye contact with John and calls back. And John's like, dude, they see us. And, you know, Ben's like, okay, what we need to do is we need to go to the front of the bus. And, and Ben's like, or John's like, why would we need to go to the front of the bus? And he's like, shenanigans happens in the back of the bus, John. And John's like, okay. And then Ben's like, the bus driver will not allow this kid to beat you up in the front of the bus. And John's like, all right, totally fair. That makes a lot of sense. So John and Ben go all the way up to the front of the bus. And that's when, as they're about to leave, the bully gets on and says, oh, John, I thought we we're having a little date this later tonight. And John turns to Ben and he's like, see, I told you he's into me. And Ben's like, pay attention. And the bully's like, so sad that you had to avoid us. Well, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. So anyways, the next day in history class, you know, John and Ben are sitting together and the teacher is handing back, you know, grades from a test that, you know, was administered the week before. And the bully was sitting behind this girl. Let's just call her Caitlin for the sake of this. She doesn't really come up again, so I'll call her Caitlin and if I forget, who cares? So the teacher is giving back the tests and, you know, John and Ben did fine. John got an A minus, Ben got a B, like totally fine grades. And when the teacher gives the test back to Caitlin, Caitlin ends up getting a C. And, you know, C is, I guess, fine enough. It's not a really, it's not a grade you should be shooting for in a lot of cases. Maybe some math classes I can understand. But it was, it, either way, Caitlin was really not happy with it. And the bully turns around and is like, oh no, the water works. And Caitlin starts crying a little bit. The bully's like, oh no, did you disappoint your parents again by doing bad? Well, next time, just try harder, Caitlin. And the bully turns around and his minions are laughing. And, you know, Ben is, or John is like, Dude, this guy is legitimately the worst. Do you see why I'm standing up to him? And Ben's like, are you really standing up to him? Like, you're just running away from him at this point. John's like, what would you do in my situation? And Ben's like, I don't know, be a bystander, stay quiet, <laughs> like keep my head down and wait till I get to leave middle school. And, and Ben's like, John's like, that's not the point, Ben. That's not the point. This kid is doing this and we're allowing it to happen. And, you know, Ben's like, yeah, we are. It sucks. What do you want us to do? John's like, I don't know. I don't know. And no one was noticing, but the substitute teacher was starting to really pay attention to everything that was going on in class, right? So after school again, John and Ben, you know, they're going around, they're walking around, and they're trying to find, they're going, they're going to the bathroom, right? And they're skipping the last class, or they're leaving five minutes early from their last class because they have to get, quote-unquote, picked up early. They faked, like, a absence tea note from their parents or whatever. So they're out of class five minutes early, and they're both walking to the bathroom. And that's when they run into the substitute teacher. Sub substitute teacher's like, hey, boys. And they're like, hey, Mr. Davenport. And Mr. Dav Mr. Davenport's like boys, I don't think you're supposed to be out of class yet. And, you know, Ben's like, yeah, well, we have a, we have a reason. It's, uh, and John's like, no, we left class early. And Mr. Davenport's like, boys, you know, you can't be doing that. And that's when John's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to tell him everything. So John lays it out and tells him literally everything. And Mr. Davenport's like, wow, wow. I was starting to pick up on some themes going on as well as, you know, what, uh, you know, the bully did in class to Caitlin today, but I didn't know it went down that deep. Are you boys able to get any, uh, any evidence for me? And, you know, the, the kids are like, what? 
And, you know, the substitute teacher's like, yeah, I've actually uh, been putting together a bit of a file recently on this kid. I uh, was a little disturbed when I saw him trip you, and I uh, wanted to really, really get some... I I wanted to stand back. I wanted to be a bystander. I wanted to watch what was happening so that I could collect enough evidence so that this kid, who seems like a real systemic problem, could be dealt with properly. And at this point, right, John's like, wait, so you saw that all? And the substitute teacher's like, yes, but, you know, what power do I have as, uh, what power do I have as a substitute? However, I do have the power, if I sit back and watch and observe everything and write it down and get evidence, that I can submit a real file and really get a mark in this kid's record and maybe stop him for good if he wants a future. And John's like, oh my God. And Ben turns him and says, like, dude, we need proof that this kid's going to try and beat you up. And John's like, I don't know how we're going to do it. He always words it weirdly. And John's like, well, maybe I should go meet him. And the substitute teacher's like, I don't think that's necessary, right? Like, I, I don't want like to put you in danger. And John's like, no, but I need to get this kid gone. And substitute teacher's like, well, I don't know how much the administration would like this, but I can stand guard and right before anything happens, I can come and break it up. And John and Ben kind of look at each other like, okay, this is like some scrawny random substitute teacher what if, like, he really holds no authority? And John's like, well, I mean, oh, I got to stop this kid somehow. So sure enough, right, John turns to Ben and says, Ben, you need to record everything. So Ben has his phone out, and he starts recording, right, and they walk down the halls. And Ben's trying to be, like, it's not super obvious with his recording, so he kind of, like, pretends like he's just on his phone, the flash is off. He's able to record it pretty well without it being super obvious. And eventually, so they're walking down the hall, and the bully's like, well, boys, I wasn't sure if I was going to see you today. It's great that you're here. And he's like, you know, Ben, I don't really have any issues with you. You can keep going. And Ben's like, well, I'm just going to wait for John. We ride the bus tomorrow. The bully's like, you know, I don't think that John will be riding the bus today. And Ben's like, well, then I won't be riding the bus today either. The bully's like, fine, well, then stand over there unless you want to become collateral damage. And so John, you know, Ben does step away, and, you know, the bully starts coming up to John. And John's like, what are you going to do to me? And the bully's like, no, I'm just going to, you know, we're just going to have a little time. And then the bully, like, kind of comes up to him menacingly, and he's like, why did you disrespect me in class two days ago? And John's like, you spat a spitball at me. I just threw it back to you. That sounds fair. The bully's like, there is a rule of law here. There is a hierarchy here. Some of us are above others at this school, and I am just here to enforce it. And John's like, how are you going to enforce it? And the bully lifts up his fist and says, this fist will make contact with your face. That is the rule of law at this school. And as soon as that happens, the substitute teacher sprints out of there and is like, hey, break it up, boys, break it up. And, you know, the bully turns around and says, oh, Mr. Davenport, like nothing's going on here. I'm just having a talk with my friend. Mr. Davenport's like, Well, it doesn't look like that to me. Um, John, I'm going to need you to come with me. The bully's like, no, John's staying with us. Mr. Davenport's like, I can get the principal over here. And the bully's like, fine, you know what, John, we'll have a little talk later. Go ahead. See you in class tomorrow, Mr. Davenport. And the bully and his minions walk away. And, you know, Mr. Davenport's like, oh, my God, that was so close. Like, I'm like, that was really reckless of me to even let that happen. And John's like, no, we got it on a recording. He turns to Ben. He's like, Ben. You got that on recording, right? And Ben's like, yep, got it on recording. He's like, audio, checks it. He's like, yep, visuals. He's like, visuals are pretty good, a little shaky, because I didn't want it to be obvious. I caught it all. At this point, right, Ben, Mr. Davenport, and uh, (coughs) John, they all go back to Mr. Davenport's, like, classroom, or it's his substitute teacher, so it's, like, the other teacher's classroom, but they go to that classroom, and, you know, John's like, hey, can you call up my mother and say I'm not going to be, like, that I had to stay late for an extra help project and that, you know, that I'm not going to be able to make the bus. So Mr. Davenport calls up his mom and his dead John's mom's like, oh, my God, are John and Ben trouble? Mr. Davenport's like, actually, the contrary. They wanted to help me with an assignment and they will be getting extra credit. And John's like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Whatever, right? So afterwards, John, Ben, and Mr. Davenport sit down and they basically construct a case against this kid. They construct bits of evidence. John starts hitting up other kids in his class, basically asking for testimonials. They are making a full test takedown of this kid, right? Of years and years and years of just everything, right? 
And at this point, they end up with a really, like, a really solid case file. They have enough to at least get him suspended, if not expelled from the school at this point. So the real nail in the coffin is when, you know, Ben turns to, uh, ben turns to John. He's like, John, do you remember James? And they're like, yeah, yeah, James, whatever happened to him? Ben's like, dude, that was the kid that, you know, the bully actually beat up. And so basically, right, there's this kid who they haven't spoken to in a while, but there was, like, a rumor that, like, the reason why he was gone for a week is because he was in the hospital and, like, because the bully, like, beat him up. And when he tried to, like, say, that like, oh, the bully did it, the bully was able to weasel out of it. And John's like, dude, with all this evidence, if we got, like, a medical record about James and put him in the case, we could get this kid out. So they contact James. He's not really responding. But Ben remembers, oh, my God, I was in, like, a sixth grade group chat with this kid. I had his number. So they call him up, and James is like, Hello? And ben and, Jan- ben and John say, hey, I don't know if you remember us. They explain everything. And James is like, look, this kid has been giving me grief for the longest time ever I tried to rat him out. I've been out. Like, he isn't giving me any more grief. Like, I don't know if I want to do this because, look, I will suffer the consequences if he doesn't get completely, like, kicked out of the school. And, you know, my name's attached to this. And then Mr. Davenport speaks up and says, hey, like, James, you don't know me, but I'm a substitute teacher, Mr. Davenport. I happen to be a decently good friends with, uh, you know, the, the teacher, well, to say Mr. Kavanaugh, that was the name I gave him, with Mr. Kavanaugh. It's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, he recommend, me, re- recommended me to come in for this week. And he said, I will make sure that this kid gets, ex- like, expelled. And the two boys were looking at each other like, wow, like, this guy's serious. And, you know, James is like, all right, well, I don't know how much I can help, but I can definitely get you the medical records. And they're like, can you do it by tonight? James is like, uh, yeah, you know, I'll talk to my parents, but we'll see. And, Jay, and uh, John and Ben were like, all right, we'll take, we'll see. Thank you so much. Like, tonight would be the greatest. We're trying to get this in by tomorrow. And things might leak if we don't. So anyways, later that night, you know, Mr. Davenport's like, all right, just send me the stuff on your school email. It doesn't matter. It's on school email. I don't care. So sure enough, right, you know, the next day or that night, James sends them like a medical record. He said, this is the date. This is the injuries like this. Like it wasn't enough to put this guy away or not put this guy away, but get him suspended before. But hopefully James is like, hopefully with all the other evidence you have, this will be enough to get the bully out of the school. So they send it to James. James sends it to Mr. Davenport. And Mr. Davenport is like, all right, men, like I will need you tomorrow, bright and early. Um, I'm gonna excuse you from all your classes. You're coming with me. We're all gonna go into the principal's office and we're dropping this bombshell. So the next day rolls around, as it always does. But this was a special day. They all walk in, John, Ben, and Mr. Davenport walk to the principal's office. They sit down. John and Ben explains everything that's happened, not just this week, but ever. And Mr. Davenport explains all the things he's observed. And you know, the principal's like, wow, this is quite a lot. And Mr. Davenport's like, well, this isn't it. And Mr. Davenport then sends like the, the terabyte large, okay, it's probably small, smaller than a terabyte, but the very large file that they've created with all the evidence, with all the, like, the references, with all the people's testimonies. And the principal's like, wow, this is... This is intense. And Mr. Davenport's like, it's really thorough too. And so basically, right, the principal's office is like, we need a couple days to make, to like go through this. And the principal's office like, you know, Ben and John, um, like you guys can be excused for the next couple days. You're not suspended. You're not anything. But if you want to take the next couple days off just for your own protection as we vet through this, that's totally fine. So John and Ben were like, oh, shoot, like, of course. The school contacts their parents. They explain that they're not in trouble. It's for their own safety. And, the you know, John's mom's like, oh, John, you should have told me about this, whatever. So a couple days go by, and that's when Mr. Davenport emails John. And the headline of the email is, the verdict is in. So John immediately, he sees the, like, the notification on his phone, and he immediately opens up the Gmail app. Let's call the subscribers who submitted the story, Zach and Ben. So yeah, this is kind of a duo story. I haven't done one of these in a while. So Zach and Ben went to school together, and there was this new kid, and his name was Liam. And in the very start of the year, like, Liam was kind of like, you know, he's new to the class, you know, Zach and Ben went over, and, you know, they were nice to him, but they never really befriended him like that. They never really became that close. 
And actually, unlike in a lot of my stories, when someone new comes, you know, and they're befriended right away, and then they're found out to be kind of weird, Zach and Ben, you know, didn't even befriend Liam till about halfway through the school year. They just happened to be assigned, like, the same project, or maybe, for some reason, they all happened to be in the same area or the same vicinity, and Zach and Ben really, you know, got a liking to Liam, and they all got, a, they all got along really well. So all of a sudden, right after a couple weeks of hanging out after, you know, figuring out that, you know, each other were cool, Liam invited Zach and Ben over to his house. He said, like, boys, you got to come over. I'm, like, getting my new, like, gaming computer this weekend. It's really crazy. It's, like, the top-end, top-end gaming computer. Basically, Liam came from, you know, a, a household that had a little extra little extra bread, a little extra cash, if you know what I mean. And, you know, his parents would, you know, occasionally let him spend it. And by occasionally, I mean always. And by spend it, I mean dropping big bucks. So Zach and Ben, kind of being aware of this, where, you know, they liked Liam as a friend, but then they were also excited to play on, like, a $10,000 gaming computer. They'll be like, oh, my God, think of the frames per second. Oh, my God, this is going to be crazy, right, or whatever. So that weekend, you know, or Zach and Ben go back home. They both ask their parents, like, hey, mom, do you mind if I go over to Liam's house? And they're like, yeah, sure, like, this weekend. Like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So anyways, the weekend comes around. Zach and Ben, or Ben takes a ride with Zach, and, you know, Zach and Ben, you know, they go over. Zach's mom drives him over, and Zach's mom's like, all right, well, have fun, you guys. And remember, you can always call my number if you need anything. And they're like, yes, of course, mom, it's all good. So they arrive to Liam's house, and, you know, Liam greets them at the door, and, you know, they're like, oh, like, this is going to be a lot of fun. And Liam's like, like, boys, I've just been setting up the game computer all day today. It is the craziest thing you will ever see or have ever seen or ever played on. It is the most epic, the most awesome, the most fantastic game and computer ever. Like, every game is running so smoothly. It's crazy. So, obviously, Zach and Ben are really excited to go up and play on the new computer. So, they all run upstairs, and they go into Liam's room, and they see it, and it is, like, it is, has, there's a massive monitor. There's a big, like, uh, gaming PC that has, like, very fancy, like, water cooling or whatever. It's got the RGB lights. It has, like, cool mouse or whatever, big gaming desktop. It is like, if you play video games, it is basically the the peak of anything you could want for a gaming setup. It, I mean, definitely wasn't minimalistic if that's your style, but otherwise, it was the peak of, like, any gaming setup ever. So, obviously, Zach and Ben were really excited to take, like, take a swing at it. So, you know, they run over, and Liam's like, wait, 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 one second. I'm just gonna, like, I'm still playing on it. I'm, I'm mid-game. And he was not mid-game, but basically Liam sat down and is like, S like, sit back, relax, and watch some gaming. And the thing was, right, uh, Zach and Ben, while they were friends with Liam, they also did want to try out the video game themselves. I mean, it was fine to watch. I mean, look, bro, like a lot of people watch YouTube videos to watch other people play the video games. That's totally fair. Like, when I was a little kid, I would go over to my friend's house and, you know, I would actually enjoy kind of the experience of watching them play because it was like I was kind of playing along and I also knew I would have been trash so it <laughs> I actually didn't mind it but you know Zach and Ben kind of did they you know they kind of wanted to play along but Liam was like oh, one more game I'll get you guys on next game and you would say that again and again and hours were kind of going by and all Zach and Ben were doing were watching was watching Liam play like I don't know like Counter-Strike or something and Liam was okay but you know everyone else in his lobby was a little bit better, so they were basically watching their friend lose in 4K Ultra HD <laughs> with 10,000 frames per second, bro. Like, it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 frames per second, you're still gonna lose if you're not better than the other person. Specs are pretty good, but they're not gonna make it if you're not good. So Liam started to get progressively angrier and angrier. And Zach and Ben were like, bro, if you ever wanna take a break, we'd be happy to swap. And he's like, no, I gotta fix my KD ratio which basically that's the ratio of like how many people, like how many people you get versus the number of people who get you in like video games in a lot of cases. And uh, since, uh, you know, Liam was losing a lot more than he was winning, his KD ratio was getting worse and worse. And it's almost kind of like the gambling mentality, like, oh, I got to like gamble my way back to the money I've lost through gambling. It's like, bro, stats are not, stats are against you on this one. And, uh, you know, Zach and Ben were just watching as Liam was like doing worse and worse and worse, and worse, and worse, and worse, and every single, like, he'd be like, ah, this game is rigged, 
and, and it wasn't just everyone else was better than him and Zach and Ben were like bro do you want to like do something else because at this point Zach and Ben look at the uh they look at the clock and it's about like three hours since they've been here and all they've done is they've watched Liam play and fail Counter-Strike for three hours so either they want to get a turn on it and maybe play Counter-Strike or a different game, or, you know, they're still friends with Liam. Maybe they just want to go and do something else with him. Maybe they just want to go and, I, I, I don't know, man, like maybe they just want to go and play outside or watch a movie or just do something else from watching him lose and get angry at Counter-Strike again and again. So Liam, Zach, and Ben are like, oh, dude, like when's, when do you want to, do you want to go outside or anything like that? He's like, bro, did you not hear me? I got to fix my KD in Counter-Strike. Like, I keep losing. I got to fix the ratio. Like, it's going to take a second, boys, so strap in. And they're like, they, Zach and Ben kind of look at each other like, bro, what's going on here? But the thing is, right, they, Liam keeps getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And this is where kind of like things start to get a little bit interesting. Because Liam, in his rage, is starting to like slam on his desk. He's like, boah, every single time he loses. And every single time he loses, which is a lot, he starts to get angrier and angrier, and then he takes his mouse and slams it on his desk, and it doesn't break the mouse, right? But it's, it's risky. It could have broken. It, it, the mouse could have broken, right? So Zach and Ben kind of look at each other like, uh, uh, this is not progressing in a good way. Because sure enough, right, you know, Liam was getting angrier and angrier, and he was, like, pounding his fist. And then one time, he even kicked his gaming computer, which they are like, whoa, chill, bro. Because imagine just a clean kick to the gaming computer, bro. You could have just destroyed the entire thing. Like, sure, that one thing wasn't $10,000. It was kind of the whole setup put together. But that's a good, like, five, dollars $6,000. He got the craziest specs ever. And so Liam was getting angrier and angrier. And Zach and Ben were like, okay, this is not great, right? <laughs> you know, he's starting to, uh, he's starting to lose it a little bit. And then he was like, bah, bah. and this is where the whole climb, not the whole climax, but this is where things start to get really crazy. Because Liam, this, it seems like a random game, but this was a really important game to Liam because he'd been losing for so long that in his head, he said, Liam, you need to win this game. You need to do it. And, you know, Zach and Ben were just thinking it was a normal game, and they were watching, and Liam was getting shot. He's like, ah, no, 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 I'm good at this. I'm good at this. He starts going around. He starts panicking. Starts, like, just has no aim at all, completely misses everyone. And when it says, like, I don't know, you lose or whatever, Liam just is silent. Because normally for the last hour, he's been like, ah, like an angry grunt. So Zach and Ben at first think that, oh, well, this Liam kid finally is getting over his rage problem. But they were soon, within three seconds, completely proven wrong when Liam takes his fist and goes, bah! and just goes, boom, into the, like, the, the monitor screen. The entire screen is, like, cracked and destroyed and falls over the desk. And then Liam stands up, and Zach and Ben are looking at each other like, oh, my God. And Liam is like, yeah, and takes his, like, like takes his like foot and just goes boom and kicks his gaming computer with such force that actually lifts 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 up off the ground flies for a little bit hits the hardwood floor and shatters and explodes and water starts leaking out of it for like the water cooling and little bits and pieces go everywhere and that's when liam flips his desk takes his mouse, swings it around on the mouse cord, is screaming the entire time, and throws it against the wall. The mouse explodes as well, and Liam starts huffing and puffing. He's like... <sighs> <sighs> and at this point, Zach and Ben are just, like, looking at each other like, oh my god, bro, oh my... God. Anyways, you've made it this far into the video. Comment, uh, spoiled down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And then also, if you want to support the channel or keep supporting the channel, because honestly, just watching this far into the videos helps support the channel a lot. All you got to do is maybe after this video, maybe at a later point, sit down and watch a bunch of videos. Watch one, two, three, or just binge watch the videos. And in the comment section down below, let me know how many videos you watched today and also what you're doing while you're watching the videos. Are you playing a video game? Are you I don't know, drawing, animating. I saw some people like writing like a screenplay, trying to go to sleep, cleaning your room. Let me know, I'm curious. Anyways, let's get back to the story because let me just say that Liam is starting to regret what he did. So anyways, Zach and Ben are just standing there, just looking around the room, 
just looking at the damage of the situation. So they're looking around, and so, yeah, Liam's monitor is, like, completely cracked and destroyed. His desk has been flipped over. Um, the, the big gaming computer has spilled into a billion pieces, is all over on the floor, cracked liquid, completely destroyed, probably like $5 of value left, right? The mouse isn't even a mouse anymore. It is splattered into a million piece pieces and there's a, like a, there's like a crunch mark on the wall. It is like cracked where he slammed it. And Liam is still like, <laughs> and Zach and Ben are like, oh my God, bro. Like this kid just went crazy because they knew how much this was. Liam was toting how it like overall cost $10,000 and how we just got it. And after having it for like three hours and just not being good at Counter-Strike, instead of being like, let me just close down, shut down my computer and go outside because I'll probably enjoy the video game another day. I'm actually just going to break my entire setup out of rage. And slowly, Liam is like, uh, uh, oh no, oh no, 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 oh no, what did I do? Boys, what did I do? What did I do? And he turns to Zach and Ben, and they're like, um, bro, I don't know how to put this, but I mean, I mean, you did just break your entire setup. And he's like, no, 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 this can't be happening. This can't be happening. I did just, and they're like, um, I mean, you did just do it, but, um, he's like, Boys, like, I, my parents know about this. This was, like, my big gift. Like, I'm not even, like, this is, this sucks, but they can't know about it. And, and they're, like, uh, Zach and Ben are, like, um, well. And they look around the room, and there's just bits of computers all over the place. The thing's leaking. Everything's destroyed. There's cracks on the walls. They're, like, uh, well, if they come in, they're going to see this. And... He's like, okay, boy, I'm sorry. Like, I know you wanted to play on it, but that's probably not going to happen now. And Zach and Ben just look at each other like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen since the gaming computer is in 100,000 pieces on the floor right now. And Zach's, or, or Liam's like, we need to hide this. Like, I need your help. Like, I, I'll make it up to you guys. We'll have, like, we'll do fun things. Like, later, we just got to clean this up. Like, my parents cannot know. And, you know, Zach and Ben are like, I mean, okay. I mean, Zach and Ben weren't going to be like, I don't know, asses, and be like, haha, lol, suck it, dude. They're gonna help, right? So they go downstairs, and, you know, Zach sneaks downstairs, and Liam says, okay, the trash bags are in the closet next to the basement. So he goes downstairs, and Liam's mother's like, Zach, how's it going? And Zach's like, haha, it's going great. There's no gaming computer in a thousand pieces upstairs. <laughs> no, but he's like, yeah, it's going great. Thanks for, thanks for asking. And she's like, oh, what are you down here for? And he's like, uh, because he can't say, oh, I need a trash bag to put all, to hide all the pieces of the $10,000 gaming setup that your son just destroyed after three hours of being garbage at a video game. And he's like, uh, a glass of water? And she's like, oh, let me go get you one. She runs off into the other room. Zach is next to the closet next to the basement. He opens it up. He sees the trash bags. And then he hears her coming back, so he quickly closes the closet door and intercepts her. And is like, thank you so much for the glass of water. She's like... Oh, you're welcome. She goes into another room. Zach opens up the closet door again, reaches in, pulls out a trash bag, quietly closes the closet door, runs back upstairs. And Liam's like, bro, why did you get a glass of water? He's like, long story. Hands the trash bag. They start putting parts of the gaming computer, whatever, in there. Liam's like, bro, why did you only get one? And Zach's like, uh, he's like, we need more. Zach's like, dude, I don't know. I've never broken a $10,000 gaming setup before. And Liam's like, not funny, bro. Just get another trash bag. So he goes back downstairs. And Zach's mom's like, oh, you're back down again. He's like, oh, yeah, I just got to use the bathroom. And she's like, oh, did Liam not tell you about the bathroom right next to his room? And Zach's like, ah, ha, ha, I guess not. And she's like, oh, well, it's, it's over here. Let me show you. And so Zach goes to the bathroom, basically just stands in the bathroom for a minute, not doing anything, and then leaves and sees that, you know, once again, uh, you know, Liam's mom is in the other room. So just goes by her quietly, goes into the closet, and just takes like three trash bags at this point, goes back upstairs and... Thankfully, those three trash bags are enough to kind of uh, enclose every or get everything, all the parts and everything. They go into the trash bags. They put it in his closet. They, you know, they put the desk back up because while the desk was like, like flipped over, it wasn't completely destroyed. It had some cracks on it. There was still chipped paint on the wall. There was nothing they could do about that at that time. So they're just like, oh, shoot. Um, so anyways, like Liam, like gets a piece of paper 
draws something on it is like, welcome to Liam's a crib or whatever, something corny, but whatever. He takes that piece of paper, tapes it over the part on the wall with the massive crack on it. It's like, okay, this shall do. So anyways, Liam, Zach, and Ben, you know, they go downstairs and Liam's like, do you want to watch a movie? And they're like, yeah, sure. That sounds fine. They watch a movie downstairs and Liam or Zach and Ben are just texting each other the entire time. Like, oh my God, what just happened? And Ben's like, bro, I'm trying to play in that $10,000 gaming setup. Like, what happened, bro? But anyways, they go upstairs when, you know, Liam's mom's like, oh, like, it's time for dinner, boys. Like, are you guys ready? It's time for dinner. So they come upstairs and, you know, the, the, the table's all set for dinner and they sit down and, you know, Liam's mom made a really good, like, steak roast. So she made something. I don't think a steak roast is a thing. She made really good food. They're all sitting around enjoying it. And that's when Liam's mom is like, so Liam, did you show the boys your new uh, video gaming thing that we bought you for your birthday? And, he turn, and she turns and she's like, boys, it's a very special video game thing. I'm like Liam and I sat around we, and I got him the greatest stuff for video games. And Liam is like, ah, ha, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Zach and Ben are like, ah, okay, yeah, we've seen it. And she's like, boys, like, isn't it so great? You know, uh, Liam, you know, your aunt Gabby, she wanted to see a photo of you sitting in the gaming setup. Can we take a photo of it after dinner? Liam's face drops. Zach's face drops. Ben's face drops. They're all like, oh, no, bro. It's over. We're done. <laughs> this is GG Unlucky. We're dead, bro. It's over. And sure enough, right, you know, Liam's like, uh, well, I was thinking of, like, doing stuff with Zach and Ben after dinner, so I might be busy. And, you know, Liam's mom's like, you know, it's only going to take a moment. And also, you know, since we bought you that really expensive gaming setup, is it only fair that we get, like, 30 seconds of a photo with you playing on it? Like, come on, that should only take a little bit of time. And she turns to Zach and Ben, and he's like, she's like, Liam, Zach and Ben, I'm sure that you wouldn't mind if we took 30 seconds out of your time with Liam to take a little photo of him on his gaming setup. And Zach and Ben were just staring at her. Because they didn't want to say, yeah, that's totally fine which would be reasonable, but also reasonable under normal circumstances. And these were not normal circumstances, but, you know, they also didn't want to be like, no, I cannot do that. No, no, that's unacceptable. You can't have 30 seconds with you with your son. You witch, you're the worst. I hate you. They can't pull an Anakin Skywalker right there. I hate you. Anyways, um, so they were like, <laughs> and Liam and Zach and Ben were just looking at each other. And they pull out their phones under the table and they're texting each other. And Liam makes like a group chat that they had. They made before for like, what's the address? What's the time to come over for the sleepover? He's like, boys, what do we do? And they're like, dude, I don't know. I really don't know. So they were like just barely playing with their food. And the mom's like, Liam, but why are you guys not eating it? Because it was actually really good. And Liam's like, I'm eating it. I'm just savoring it. And they're like, yeah, me too. So they keep eating. And they're really just messing with their food to buy them more time to figure out what to do before their mom comes in and is like, oh, my God. Like all that kind of stuff. And so sure enough, Liam sends a text saying, hey, I, I don't think my mom totally remembers what a gaming setup looks like. So maybe we can make a fake one, but I need you guys to go up and come up with something before I will be here with my mom. And Zach and Ben are like, well, I feel like your mom will just like, if we go up, your mom will be like, oh, why don't we just go up now? And Zach's like, hey, I'll stay here. I'll talk to, I'll talk to your mom. How about you and Ben go up and come up with something? And Liam's like, okay, that's fine. So Liam and Ben are like, all right, thank you so much. And Zach's like, oh, Liam's mom. She's like, yes. I have some questions for you. So basically, right, uh, I'm not going to tell the part of the story where, or actually I will. So this is a part where it splits. I'm going to tell Zach's perspective and then Ben's perspective because Ben went upstairs to help Liam make the fake setup and Zach stayed down the stairs to try and buy a bit as much time with Liam's mom as freaking possible. So anyways, uh, Ben and Liam, they run upstairs and Liam's like, dude, I don't even know what this means, but we got to come up with something. And, you know, Zach's like, um, well, okay, well, what do we have around the room? So Liam is like, oh, wait, I still have, like, parts of my old gaming setup, 
Like, uh, we gotta, like, mix it up with something new, because my mom might remember it if it just looks like the old thing. So anyways, Liam gets out his old, like, laptop, you know, he puts it out, and then he decides, okay, we gotta make it look like it's something new. So they take out a bunch of markers and pens and, like, all this, like, arts and crafts stuff, and they start, like, decorating it. Like, they start drawing all over it, but they try to make it look as, like, official as possible, and they also, like, Liam's like, oh, I think I have, like, some RGB lights or something. So they put that on the computer, right? It looks really scuffed, but, like, when moms aren't going to really know what the new video game tech is going to be. He's like, oh, I need a mouse. He's like, I still have my old one. Takes out his old mouse. It's, like, a white mouse, so they're able to draw all over it and make markings and be like, ooh, this is really the most epic mouse ever. And he's like, well, my mom also remembers buying, like, a gaming, like, a, a PC. And she says uh, she's not going to, if she doesn't see a big box, you know, that's going to be a problem. So Liam looks around and, you know, Liam's like, oh my God, I almost forgot. Liam had like a big black box that he bought something from Amazon or some kind of shipping service. And it came in a black box and like he just saved the box for some reason. He put the box under his desk. And he's like, you know, I, I need to find some kind of like wire type thing. And he goes over to the smashed mouse. He pulls the wire out of the smashed mouse. He puts the wire into this empty black cardboard box and then he like attaches the wire to his computer by just literally putting his his mat who's like old like a I don't know, probably was like a Chromebook or something on top of like the wire. So it looked like it was connected to anyone who has no idea what they're looking at. This was like a little bit. It was kind of convincing if you had no idea what you're looking at. And that's when they heard Liam's mom come up the stairs. So anyways, flash forward, like, flash back, like, five minutes. So Liam and Ben, they go up the stairs, and Zach is sitting there at the dinner table trying to figure out a way to stall Liam's mom for as long as humanly possible. So he's like, so tell me about your time on the, uh, the parent council for education. Basically, there's, like, a parent like little organization that would like send suggestions to the school or whatever. And she's like, Oh my God, Zach, you don't want to hear about that. How about we just go upstairs? And he's like, no, 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 no. I, I do. No, no, no. You, you got me all wrong. I, I, I do want to hear about that. I want to hear all about the, 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 the legislation that you do. Um, yeah. Tell me about the legislation. I'm really invested in the legislation of parent teacher. Oh my God. And she's like, okay, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So after about like a minute, she's like, okay, well, that's the gist. Do you want to go up now? And he just knows for a fact, because like Ben basically said, yo, we need time. And he's like, um, so, well, actually, you know, I heard that you were an English major. And she's like, I was an English major. How did you know? And he's like, uh, uh, uh well, I'm not doing well in my English class. Can you give me some advice? And she's like, you know, Zach, I would be happy to sit down with you in like an hour or so and just go over everything I know about English. And he's like, well, can you give me a quick rundown now? And she's like, you know what? Sure, sure I can. So three to four minutes later, she's done. And she's like, all right, well, I can't wait anymore. I got to see this gaming setup with my little boy in it. So she starts walking up the stairs. And Zach is like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So Zach is like walking up the stairs with her and is like trying to like speak as loud as possible to try and give a little bit of an ad, like an advance to both Ben and Liam so that they could like hear it coming. So anyway, Zach like opens the door and he's like, Zach is terrified because what he sees in front of him is the most ridiculous thing he's ever seen. An old Chromebook with crappy marker all over it, a old mouse with marker on top of it, a cardboard freaking box with a weird wire coming out of it. And, you know, Liam's mom is just speechless for a second. And they're all like, oh, no, she doesn't buy it. She doesn't buy it. And she's like, it's beautiful. And they're all like, oh, my God. She's like, Liam, Liam, go sit in that chair right now. I'm going to take a photo for your Aunt Gabby. She's going to love it. And, you know, Liam's mom takes out her, like, her iPad. She's like, say cheese for Facebook. Liam's like, ah, ha, ha. She takes the photo, sends it to Aunt Gabby. She's like, oh, this is so great, Liam. Liam, what's that leaking? And that's when, like, Liam, Zach, and Ben, they all turn to where Liam's mom is pointing. Out from the closet is a leaking puddle. And Liam, Zach, and Ben realize that the gaming computer that was smashed into a billion pieces and put into the, uh, uh, the, 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 the like, the trash bag, the tra it must, something in there must have ripped the trash bag and, like, the, the coolant from the gaming system must be leaking out. 
Liam's like, I don't know, Mom. I'll go clean that up. I want to, like, play with my friends right now. And she's like, no, let me do it. You guys have fun in your gaming adventures. Walks over, opens up the closet. She's like, Liam, what are these trash bags? And Liam's just like, I don't know, Mom. I'll bring them downstairs. She's like, no, 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 I got it. She opens one up. She opens up another one. She goes in there, starts messing around, starts looking at stuff. She's like, Liam, what is this? And that's when she pulls out a piece. A piece of, like, the plastic shell around the gaming computer that had the logo. And since she bought the stuff, she recognized the logo. She's like, Liam? He's like, <laughs> he's like, yes, Mom? She's like, can I have a word with you? Can your little friends leave the room for a second? And, and Zach and Ben are just like, oh, no, bro, we're done. And so they got out, and they walked downstairs, and they just hear, Liam, you know how much money I spent on this? This is ridiculous. What did you do? Did you throw it out of a 10-story building? <laughs> and Liam's like, Mom, I'm sorry. Is <laughs> like the craziest freak out ever. And Zach and Ben are just like, <sighs> they're just standing downstairs like, well, we tried, dude. Like, I don't know. Just don't break your $10,000 setup next time, maybe. And so eventually, after 20 minutes, they stop. They, they, the yelling stops. They get a text from Liam saying, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, it's like 7, so it's kind of late. But can you ask your parents to come pick you up? Like, my mom just, my mom wants to have a long conversation with me, and I don't think it's going to be fun for you guys to be here. And Leah, Zach, and Ben are like, sure. Zach sends a text to his mom. And his Zach's mom's like, what did you boys do? And Zach's like, it's not us, actually. We, we were cool. But can you come pick us up? And Zach's mom's like, okay, of course. Like, give me 20 minutes. So after 20, 20 minutes comes by, Zach sends a text to Liam saying, hey, sorry about tonight. Like, we're peacing now. Uh, we'll see you in school tomorrow. Hope that you survive. If you're banned from gaming forever, you can always come over to our houses. We'll let you play. Like, it's all good. So they get in the car. And Zach's mom's like, boys, what happened? We're going to call today's subscriber who submitted the story. We're going to call him Lucas. So this all started one day when Lucas was in seventh grade. And he was riding the bus. And it was the first day of school. So, you know, he knew everyone in school. You know, they've been going to the same school for, like, the last six years or whatever. And Lucas was on the bus with his friend. Uh, you know, they were talking about, you know, they they were excited for the beginning of seventh grade. They were excited to see their new teachers, to see everything. Basically, they were excited to start the new school year. And so they pull up and, you know, they're walking out. And that's when they see this car pull up. It is a black Mercedes car. It is like one of the fancier models. Probably goes for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Lucas doesn't know this at the time, but Lucas knows that this is a nice car so this really really fancy expensive car pulls up and you know the the door opens and this kid walks out and it's this kid that lucas doesn't recognize and it's because this kid is new to the school and so this kid walks out he's in these like newly pressed linen shirt he has these like pants on he's got like a really slick backpack his haircut is like pristine. He's got new like whatever super fancy shoes on or whatever. And he walks out and he walks into school. So Lucas, you know, his first class period is English and he sits down and, you know, the teacher's like, hey, everyone, welcome back from summer. I just want to quickly introduce our new student. And they point to the student and says, hey, can you introduce yourself? And so the student stands up and says, hey, everyone, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm new to this town. I uh, used to live, you know, a couple, you know, a couple, whatever, uh, miles that way. But, you know, my mom had to move because my dad had a super sick job that just had us forced us to move. And, yeah, I'm going to be with you guys for the rest for the next couple years. So, uh, yeah, my name's uh, Ben. Nice to meet you guys. And, yeah. And the teacher's like, okay, Ben, that was great. And Ben sits down, and Lucas, who's in this class, is kind of just thinking to himself, okay, well, this kid sounds like kind of like a jerk, but maybe he just had a really bad first impression. I'm not going to judge him on that. So anyways, they're wait uh, school, you know, the school bell rings, and they go outside, and they're kind of waiting to be picked up. So Lucas is picked up on the bus, which the bus comes like 10 minutes after school, and Ben is waiting for his super, like, sick Mercedes car or whatever to pull up. And so Ben actually approaches Lucas, and he's like, what's good, man? And Lucas is like, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the school. How's your stay been, basically? And, you know, Ben's like, it's all right here. It's all right. Uh, he's, and then Ben's like, so... What car are you being picked up in? And Lucas was like, uh, well, 
I don't, I don't actually get picked up. I, I ride the bus. And Ben's like, what? Okay, well, uh, what car does your mom drive? And, you know, Lucas, he doesn't know, but it's not the most expensive car ever because, you know, his family's, his family's not doing so hot right now financially. It's things like this happen. So he's like, uh, I don't know. And Lucas is like, you don't know? Well, it can't be a good car if you don't know. My mom is driving a Mercedes S-Class, or I don't know. I, I'm not into cars. But anyway, she's driving, like, $200,000 Mercedes. It's about to pull up. Oh, there she is right now. And sure enough, the super fancy car pulls up, and the door opens, and, like, this kind of, like, blonde woman with probably about $100,000 worth of plastic surgery and these, like, big, really big black sunglasses leans out the, you know, the, uh, the driver's side uh, seat and, like, looks out the window is like... Ben! Oh, hey there! And looks at Lucas, and Lucas kind of waves timidly. She's like, Ben, you've already made new friends? Ben, this is so great! And Ben's like, whatever, Mom. Bye, dude. And Ben gets in the car, and they drive off. And another kid, one of Lucas's friends, walks up to Lucas after Ben and his mom drive away, and his one of uh, and Lucas's friend is like, dude, that guy's kind of a jerk. And Lucas is like, yeah, um... He kind of asked me what car my mom drove, and then when I said, I don't know, he says, well, it's probably a poor car <laughs> if you don't know, and then he said how much his parents' car's car cost, and then he got in and he drove away. And Lucas's friend's like, yeah, this guy's a, this guy's a, this guy's a pee-pee. Uh, they're in seventh grade, man. Maybe they said something worse, but I don't know. I'm trying to keep ads on this video. YouTube, don't thunderbolt me, please. Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around. And Lucas is kind of like, all right, well, me and Ben, we're not going to be boys. We're not going to be super tight. We're not going to be hanging out that much. But you know what? Fine. He can exist. I can exist. We will coexist, right? We just won't interact with each other that much. And that is totally okay. So they go to lunch, and they're sitting down. And Lucas is sitting with some of his friends. However, this is a pretty big table so that there's a lot of open seats. And Ben walks in, and Ben kind of has a posse of kids behind him. Ben kind of has this like aura, like this aura of confidence, and people know that you know he's got a lot of money too. So for some reason, that just immediately made him popular. So Ben was walking in, and imagine him strutting in. So he's got his chest out, his arms are kind of waving back and forth a little bit. Ben is strutting into the cafeteria with his like army of little minions behind him, and Lucas looks over. He's like, "What?" and Almost every other table was full, so Ben and his minions, I'm going to call them that, Ben and his minions, they sit down at the table, and they're all, they already start talking, and Lucas and his friends were talking about how much they didn't like Ben, but were just going to like, whatever. So it's kind of like, they all kind of look at each other when Ben and his friends sit down. They're all kind of like, uh, okay. So anyways, right, you know, Ben looks over and says, what do you boys have for lunch today? And, you know, they open it up, and... Uh, I, Lucas has like, well, I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And Ben was like, uh, I mean, nice dude. And Lucas was in his mind. He's like, dude, why? Why Why are you scoffing at that? Like, bro, are, are, are you serious? Are you serious? And, Lu and Ben was like, yeah, I got pretty standard lunch today. I got some leftover sushi from last night and also some cold cuts my dad made me on his grill. Do you want to hear about my dad's grill? It went for $5,000. At this point, you know, Lucas is just like, he's zoning out of the conversation. He's trying to turn back to his friends because it's Lucas and his friends and Ben and his minions. They're all sitting at that table. So Lucas is kind of hoping that Ben will start talking primarily to his minions and Lucas can talk, go back and talk to his friends, right? But Ben is not letting that happen because Ben turns around again and says, So, Lucas, tell me about you. What do your parents do for work? Which, first of all, when you say, tell me about you, I, don't you want to know about them? Why does it matter what their parents do for work, bro? But but anyways, right? Lucas is kind of like taken aback. He's like, well, um, I, I don't know. My my dad, uh, my dad, you know, he 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 works a couple jobs. Um, and Lucas is like, what jobs are those? Or Ben is like, what jobs are those, Lucas? And uh, Lucas is like, um, well, I mean, he just works a couple. I mean, he works at this movie theater and. Ben is like, oh, is he the manager? Does he own it? And Lucas is like, no. He just works a concession. But he also works another job. And Lucas and Ben is like, oh, 
So he's like one of those uh, minimum wage guys. Okay. And Lucas is starting to get a little bit upset because, you know, he doesn't get to see his dad that often. And the reason why he doesn't get to see his dad that often is because dad is putting in the work. He's trying to support for his family. Want to make sure that Lucas, you know, has all the amenities he needs to grow up nicely right before he set off into the world. So Lucas is a little bit upset. So he doesn't ask back. He's trying to end this conversation. And Ben's like, oh, do you want to know what my parents do? Okay, I'll tell you anyways. So my dad, my dad, oh, I'm going to call him dad. So my daddy, oh, he, he's a lawyer, but he's not your standard, like, broke-ass lawyer. He's really good. He's really good. And Lucas is like, don't care, don't care. I just don't care. But all in his head, right? He doesn't want to say this. He's not trying to be a jerk explicitly. And Ben is like, yeah, he makes a lot of money. And he has a lot of crazy clients, like all oh, those big oil companies and tobacco companies. He's like the number one for them. And Lucas and his friends kind of look at each other like, um, why, 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 are we, why are we outing ourselves as the villain here? Come on now. <laughs> um, but anyways, you know, Ben is like, yeah, my mom, she's just a housewife. So useless, dude. And, and Lucas is just looking at his friends like, did you just call your mom useless, bro? Who raised you? Let's hope it wasn't her. What? Huh? Well, what's going on? And so Lucas and his friends, Lucas is like, oh, I got, I got to go. And Ben's like, why? Uh, dinner's in oh, Lunch isn't over yet. And, you know, Ben's just like, um, well, I, I got to get prepared for a test. And all of his friends were like, yeah, we're in the same class. We got to prepare too. And Ben's like, all right, cool. And so sure enough, um, you know, uh, uh, Lucas and his friends, they get up. They walk out of there. Lucas and his friends don't have a test to prepare for. They just want to get out of there. So sure enough, Lucas and his friends are walking out, and they're just like, they start talking to each other once they're out of, like, you know, earshot. They're like, oh, my God, I knew that guy sucked, but that guy really sucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> they, were basically, they, they, were dumb, they were dumbfounded. They had no idea just what happened. They have no idea how to comprehend the conversation they just had. So Lucas and his friends are like, all right, we're going to have to coexist with this guy we, we somehow, you know what, as long as we don't have a class with him, we'll be fine. And that's when they figured out that he actually moved classes in the next day. Lucas realized that he had a class with Ben. Wait. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. I'm going to try and hard a bunch of comments to say spoiled, just to say thank you for just supporting the channel. And also, if you want to support the channel even more, sit down and watch a bunch of videos in a row. Basically, binge watch these videos. And let me know in the comment section how you're doing this, if you're watching them to go to sleep, if you're playing video games, if you're drawing art, if you're animating, if you're... I don't know, mining Bitcoin, whatever you're doing in the background, right? Let me know in the comment section and I'll be putting random comments shouting out people who are supporting the channel like these people. Thank you guys so much. Let's get back to the story. This might be the most craziest spoiled kid story I've ever told. So Lucas and his friends asked if they were leaving the lunchroom after what just happened, which was crazy. They were like, you know what? At least we don't have a class with him. Two days later, Lucas is sitting in his, last, in his math class. He gets there a little bit early. And the, the worst sight, the worst, the worst visual to cross his eyes ever happened because the door opened and Ben walked through. And Lucas was so confused, but that's when he remembered it was early on enough in the school year that people can switch math classes. And uh, Ben was in the kind of the, the, the least advanced math class. You know how in some schools they have like accelerated kind of standard and then the subpar out dude i was in the subpar one sometimes sometimes so i'm not saying that as a diss i've been there but anyways right uh lucas realizes that you know ben was probably self-placed himself in super advanced and then just fell down two rungs of math classes and eventually ended up here and lucas was like oh no 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 no, 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 this can't be, this can't be. It's like when Michael Scott saw that Toby returned. No. Nah. Anyways, though, Lucas is like, all right, fine. It's math class. It's not like we're going to be collaborating a ton. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to perform well in the tests. I'm going to ignore this Ben kid. I hate this kid. We are not talking. And that's it. So about a week later, the math teacher assigned random partners to do a big math project. Lucas was like, a project in math class? And the partners are randomized? Okay, well, what are the odds that I get Ben? 
Sure enough, the teacher goes in and puts all the names into a random like name pair generator website. He's like, all right, first pair, Lucas and Ben. Lucas was just like, God, I know you are testing me, but what have I done? <laughs> Why? What have I done? A- anyways, right, Lucas is like, all right, I have to do it with Ben. That is fine. And the teacher's like, all right, probably for this project, the best thing you can do is to work together on the weekends. And, you know, Luke's like, and I have to go to Ben's house now. Oh, my God. So sure enough, Ben goes, it comes over. He's like, what's up, bro? Let me get your number. And, you know, Lucas pulls out, you know, his, his phone. And Ben's like, bro, what generation is that? Is that like an iPhone Zero? Lol. This is the, this is the newest iPhone ever. It actually has the most storage possible. And, you know, Lucas is like, that's nice, Ben. That's nice. Ben's like, oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to what you said. What's your number again? So Lucas, you know, gives Ben his number. They contact each other. And apparently Ben actually lives like a 10-minute walk. And Lucas is like, fine, I'm just, I'm just going to walk there, whatever. I don't even want my parents. Like, I don't want my mom interacting with his mom. I don't want them to become friends. I want none of this. So on a Saturday, he gets up and he walks 10 minutes down and he can literally feel the neighborhood getting nicer and nicer with every step he takes. It's ridiculous. He's like, well, so this is apparently the nice part of town. Good to know I live in the bad part. What a lovely day. So Lucas keeps walking over and eventually, you know, he's getting, he sees this really big fancy house at the very end of the street. And he's like, well, I don't even have to check my maps. I know for a fact this is, this is Ben's house. So he gets, he walks over and he gets there and he rings the doorbell and he just kind of looks around. It's the most extravagant, exquisite house you have ever seen. It's like the most lavish, insert adjectives of money, basically, right? And uh, sure enough, you know, the door opens and it's, the, you know, it's Ben's mom, We you know, with the ten hundred thousand dollars of plastic surgery the super the 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 still has the sunglasses on inside for some reason has the big long blonde hair and she's like oh ben oh oh lucas i'm so excited for you to come here ben ben your friend is here shut up mom ben anyways after a bit of yelling ben eventually comes down it's like what's up let's just crank this math out dude let's get it done with and so lucas is like all right so they head downstairs to Ben's basement, which the basement is not like a standard basement, which is like wet and cold. It's like fancy and everything. It's great. Got like a thousand flat screen TVs, bars of literal solid gold. Um, maybe, maybe is like an alternative investment, but they go down there and there's this table. So Lucas has his backpack. He whips out his backpack and he's like, all right, let's work on this project. And Ben's like, so how much do I need to... How much do I need to pay you to do the whole project for me? And Lucas is like, what? And Ben's like, yeah, can I, can I give you like $5? That's like a ton for you, right? Like wouldn't $5 just like get a whole year's worth of rice and beans for your family to eat, right? And Lucas is like, he is barely keeping it in at this point. He's like, this might be the most insufferable kid I have ever met. And Ben's like, yeah, what, what, what do you want, $6 or something? Seven? Oh my god. Seven must be crazy. Have you ever, have you ever even seen seven whole dollars in your entire life? I don't think so. At this point, Luke is like, no way. No, 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 no. This, this is not how it goes. This is not how it's going, right? No, no, no. No. This is not, this is not what's happening. Lucas is like, Ben, it would be a violation of the honor code for me to do all the work. He said, it's not going to be hard. Just sit down and do it for me. Ben's like, uh, uh, fine, I'll do it. Fine, Ben, or fine, Lucas, whatever, dude. And so sure enough, they sit down, and, you know, Ben's like, you know what, I'm actually not going to do this. I'm going to go play some video games. But my mom knows that I have a project, so you had to come over, and just don't tell her anything. Um, yeah, so if you want to fail this, go ahead and do nothing, right? I don't care about my grades, right? I don't care about my grades, which Ben was kind of bluffing here. But Ben was like, I don't care, right? But I'm not going to do anything. And if you don't do anything, then both of us are getting an F. And I know the grades matter to you, buddy. So either you do something and we both do well, or you don't do anything and we both fail. I feel like it's a pretty, (laughs) I feel like it's pretty, pretty obvious answer here. And Lucas was like, this kid isn't just a jerk. He's evil, right? What? 
So sure enough, Lucas is like, no. In his head, he's like, you're not getting away with this. I might do this. I'm going to do the work, but you're not getting away with this. So Lucas just sits down at the table and says, fine, Ben, you drive a hard bargain, but fair enough. Th- don't worry. Lucas did not concede here. This is not the end of it. Don't worry. So Lucas sits down, and after like grinding away for hours, he eventually finishes the project. And Ben the whole time is playing like on his Xbox. He's like, what? Are you done? Cool. See you later. See you tomorrow in- or see you on Monday in class, buddy. And Lucas gets his stuff. He's like, bye, Ben. Puts his stuff together. Ben's mom's like, oh, come back soon. I, if you want. And, you know, Lucas is like, aha, thank you. Thank you very much. And Lucas walks out and he's walking down all the way back to his house. The entire way back, he's like, this is not over. Ben did not win this round. He won, the, he won this battle, but I will win the war here. But exactly how was going to be the hard part? Because Lucas knew that Ben could lie. And, like, if Lucas, like, turned him in and said, hey, I did all the work here, Ben could simply say, oh, well, that's a lie. I did the work. Prove it. Prove it if I didn't, right? And it would be really hard. And Lucas was, like, dealing, was trying to figure that out until it came to him. Ben has no idea what the project is. He has no idea what the continents of, or what is inside of the project. He doesn't know anything about the project. And if Lucas was to turn him in, he would tell the teacher, and the way that you're going to prove it is you're going to ask Ben to say anything about the project. You're going to ask Ben to explain what he contributed to without showing him the project. Because Ben did nothing, and he knows nothing. Ben might be able to weasel his way out if he actually sees the project being being like, oh, that's totally me. I totally did that part, and that part, and that part. In fact, I did all of it. Like, you know, he wouldn't be able to do that if he never saw the project. And Lucas starts skipping on the... He, he's so excited, he starts skipping on his way back home. He is just full of energy because he has gotten Ben at his own freaking game. So anyways, Monday comes in. And, you know, the teacher's, like, at the end of class, the teacher's collecting projects. And Ben goes up with a project, and, you know, or Lucas goes up with a project, and Ben is, like, walks up as well and says, hey, teacher, look at this project. Isn't it so great? And the teacher's like, yeah, good job, guys. And so Ben walks back to the, to kind of, like, walks away, goes to the back of the classroom again. And Lucas kind of, like, stays up there and whispers to the teacher, hey, uh, c- can you wait a second after... C- c- can we talk after class for a second? The teacher's like, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever you want to do. And so when the bell rings, everyone leaves. And then, uh, you know, Lucas and the teacher are here. And Lucas says, hey. And Lucas explains everything that happened. He explains that Ben didn't do the work, but didn't just not do the work. He told him that, like, since he wasn't going to do the work, if he didn't want to fail, Ben ha- uh, Lucas had to do everything. And the teacher's like, wow, like, this is a really serious accusation. Like, not only will he, like, fail, but this is, like, this is part of, like, academic honesty because he said that this was his work. So Lucas says, okay, I know this is a big deal, but I, for you to prove it, just go up to Ben and tell him that, like, exactly what I'm saying and then tell him to prove that he did anything by explaining anything about the project. Anything about the project. I am so confident that he didn't do a single thing that if he gets, like, a single part of our presentation correct, besides the cover, then you know what? Fine. He's off the hook, and I'm wrong. Even though I'm not, but I'm wrong. He doesn't get punished. And the teacher's like, okay. I'm going to do it. And so he's like, all right, I'm actually going to go to the, I know exactly what class that uh, Ben is in right now. I'm going to go pull him out of it because this is serious enough. And uh, yeah, all right, Lucas, I will keep you updated. So anyways, Lucas goes to his next class and he's barely able, right? He's barely able to focus because the only thing he can think about right now is, oh my God, he's like not interrogating Ben, but he's trying to, he's like, he's asking Ben, is Ben going to like, did Ben actually, did, did Ben like, figure out something about the project. I really went on a limb saying he won't know anything. Like, what if he just knows one single thing? What if he looked over and just remembers something? Like, oh my God. And he's going to know that I ratted him out. He's going to make my life terrible if things, oh my God, like if this doesn't work. And so after this class ends, he's walking, Lucas is walking to his next class. And that's when he sees his math teacher walking by. And his math teacher is like, oh, Lucas, can I talk to you for a second? And Lucas's heart just drops because he knows that this, this right here, this is the moment. 
Like if something's going to happen, it's going to happen now. So Lucas walks over and they both walk over to like an empty classroom and they walk in and the math teacher's like, hey, Lucas, so I just want to tell you, I talked with Ben and I told him what, what you said to me and he denied everything. He denied every detail. And in fact, he said that you were the one who was slacking and knew that you were slacking and didn't put in equal work. So you wanted to cover it up and you told him that, you know, that you were thinking of like lying or something like that. And Lucas is like, what? And the teacher's like, I, I don't know. He explained it kind of weirdly, but at that point, it was a he said, she said, so it was a draw. And Lucas was like, no. And then the teacher's like, well, at that point, it was a draw. But then I decided that I was going to go along with your kind of theory of asking him to prove anything, which he said he did most of the work, so that wouldn't be a problem, right? And Lucas is like, correct if he did stuff. And the teacher's like, okay, so yeah. And I went to him and I asked him, I said, hey, tell me what you did in the project. And Ben replied, oh, let me see the project and I'll point it out. And I told Ben that, no, I'm trying to test if you actually know anything about the project, because if you did it, you certainly should. And while Ben said a lot of words and he made a lot of sounds and he did a lot of movements, Ben didn't tell me one single thing about the project, and I realized that what you were saying was 100% accurate. Ben is not only failing this assignment, but, you know, we've sent him to the deans for, you know, plagiarism and academic honesty, and this will be pretty severe on his record. Thank you for, te- thank you for letting us know. And at this point, right, Lucas knew. Lucas knew that he won. Finally, after all this work. But Lucas also knew another thing. Ben wasn't getting expelled. He wasn't getting kicked out. And while Lucas did a pretty big damaging blow, Ben would surely, surely return. And Ben would probably be worse than he's ever been before. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it.